Hello everyone! Welcome to Peach Dish Discovery. I'm Katie, I'm the nutritionist for Peach Dish, and today we're learning all about superfoods. So what is a superfood? Although there's no real scientific basis or any sort of regulated definition of a superfood, it's generally defined as a food that is extremely nutrient dense. That is, it's very high in vitamins and minerals and all the good stuff we need to survive. They can be described as more bang for your buck um, per calorie. And when it comes to scientific and medical research, they tend to have positive health correlations and outcomes. But they are superfoods, not miracle workers. There is no magical pill that will cure any sort of disease. However, consuming these types of foods regularly tends to lead to a life with lower risks of chronic illnesses and just a general healthy, happy life. <laughs> Common examples would be like kale or blueberries, but really any fruit or vegetable, any legume, any nuts or seeds, any whole grains, they fit the bill um, as far as superfood goes. And um, especially if they're prepared without a lot of added sugar or salt, um, not a lot of added fat, especially saturated fat. Um, let's say, think the difference between a baked potato and chili cheese fries. <laughs> when it comes to your essential vitamins and minerals, it's important to remember that they're considered essential because our bodies don't have the tools to make them ourselves. So we need to consume them through the diet uh, in foods such as your superfoods. These foods also tend to be high in something called phytochemicals, which can have uh, nutritional properties to us, in which they would be called phytonutrients. Now, phyto means plant, so you can see how these chemicals come from plants. <laughs> Examples of these phytochemicals would be your carotenoids, which are in your red and orange fruits and vegetables, um, your anthocyanins, which are like red and purple, and then maybe some sulfides, such as in your onions and garlic. Lots of research has been done and is being done when it comes to these phytonutrients, but in general, evidence points to the positive in terms of health benefits, but we need a lot more uh, proof in order to build a sustainable body of research. Are there good foods and bad foods? No. Your food doesn't have a moral compass. It doesn't have anything for or against you. It's just food. Your spinach isn't good your ice cream isn't bad, um, you can have your kale and eat your cake too. <laughs> Food is fuel, for sure, but it's also way more than that. It's a social thing, like I said, it's an emotional thing, and you should recognize that. Now, unless you have a medical reason like an allergy or a severe intolerance, there's really no reason to eliminate or even restrict a certain food. It's all about balance, y'all. So you want to eat more superfoods, but is it better to eat them cooked or raw? So there's pros and cons to cooked and raw foods. Uh, on the raw food side, the pro is that you get to preserve some of those nutrients because some of them, especially like vitamin C and some of your B vitamins, are actually heat sensitive. They'll break down. Um, and they're also water soluble vitamins. So if you're cooking that vegetable or fruit in water, there's a high chance that that vitamin will leach out. On the con side, raw foods can be harder to chew and digest due to high fiber. Um, and then some of your fruits and vegetables aren't really even edible when they're not cooked, such as your starchy roots and tubers like potatoes. In fact, uh, sometimes the fiber is so high that it can actually trap the nutrients inside. So you're not getting all of the nutrients once you actually consume these raw fruits and vegetables. Furthermore, there is a higher risk of foodborne illness. Now that kind of goes into knowing where you get your fruits and vegetables though. And if you know your farmer, you're probably fine, of course, to eat raw fruits and vegetables. Um, what's cool about Peach Dish is that with every meal kit delivery, every uh, meal kit that you order, in your box there's actually a list of uh, suppliers and farmers who grew the fruits and vegetables that you are enjoying in your meal kit. So you do, in a way, know your farmer. And you know that your food is coming from a good place. 
Now on the pro side of cooked foods, uh, when you use heat and maybe chemicals to break down the fibers of your fruits and vegetables, they're not only easier to chew and digest, they're also a lot tastier for most of us. A good example of this would be onions. Um, I'm sure we know a lot of people that do not like raw onions, but when you cook them down, they become the base of quite a lot of dishes, and if you cook them low and slow, they become nice and caramelized and very yummy. What's interesting to note is often when we cook certain fruits and vegetables, certain nutrients within them become more bioavailable to us. An example of this would be calcium and iron within your spinach. And the reason this happens is because there's a compound called oxalic acid. And that tends to, let's say, grab on to those important minerals that we want to consume and make it so that we can't absorb them. But with heat, that oxalic acid will break down. Therefore, we have the calcium and iron in our bodies. <laughs> Another example is when you cook down tomatoes. Um, I'm sure we all know that tomatoes are high in lycopene, which is a carotenoid. And what happens when you cook your tomatoes is the lycopene concentration goes up. So we get more of that good nutrient. So which one should you do, raw or cooked? Uh, I say, why not do both? Uh, the most important thing is that you consume your fruits and vegetables, your superfoods, in the way that makes you happiest. A fun way to eat your superfoods is to eat them seasonally. Now every season, fall, winter, spring, and summer, has its own superfoods. And they can be different depending on where you live. One of the benefits of being located here in the southeast, which is where Peach Dish is, we're in Georgia, is that we have a variety of seasonal weather year-round. And that means our farmers and growers, they always have something new and fresh and delicious, um, whether it's summer or in winter. There are a few benefits to eating your superfoods seasonally. One is that when you eat a fruit or vegetable at the peak of its season, it's also at the peak of its flavor and nutrition. But why is that? One pretty basic answer to that is that when a plant is grown in an environment and a climate that feels, I guess, natural to it and in the correct season, then it will flourish. And when it flourishes, that means we flourish. Eating seasonally also means you get a variety of fruits and vegetables throughout the year. And when you get a variety of fruits and vegetables, those superfoods throughout the year, you also get a variety of different uh, nutrients. It also helps that the variety makes eating your fruits and vegetables more fun and adventurous. Do superfoods detox you? Now, you may have seen the term detox on some foods or food products, but that kind of advertising can be misleading. There isn't really a food that can detoxify your body or cleanse your system. First of all, you have some pretty awesome organs called the liver and the kidneys, which do a wonderful job of detoxifying your body. And they do this naturally. They do a really good job of it all the time, constantly. Um, if there is a way that you could help your liver and your kidneys do their job, that would be to stay adequately hydrated. Um, that is, drink enough water. You may notice that some of those uh, detox uh, products would be waters or maybe their fruits or vegetables. Now fruits and vegetables tend to be about 80 to 90 percent water um, so it kind of makes sense that those products sort of yes they help you but only in a way that a glass of water would help you. Now a lot of those food products that advertise for detoxifying they tend to cost a lot of money when I suppose you could just put that money in the hands of a farmer in the form of maybe a cucumber or a tomato in exchange, and then you're also helping your community and your liver at the same time. One of my favorite peach dishes is the superfood salad. Um, I really like it because it's really easy to put together. It's of course packed with those superfoods we were just talking about, and most importantly, it's very, very tasty. First, to a medium saucepan, you'll add your wheat berries. A wheat berry is actually the whole grain version of your wheat that you usually find in bread and such. And it's an example of, as I said before, a whole grain. 
Whole grains are great for you, especially when they're replacing refined grains because they are higher in certain vitamins and minerals, and most importantly, they're much higher in fiber. While our wheat berries are cooking, we'll prepare our mise en place. Peel and have a shallot. To one half, you'll mince it, and to the other half, thinly slice it. Shallots and garlic and other members of the allium family are chock full of good things, um, like sulfide compounds, like I was talking about before, and a lot of other compounds that have anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, and a whole lot of other benefits for you. Chop your kale and bok choy. Kale and bok choy are obviously dark green leafies, which are of course good for you, we all know about that. They're high in vitamins A, K, C, E, and so much more, and of course iron and calcium and lots and lots of fiber again. Quarter, core, and thinly slice an apple. As we've all heard before, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Um, not that you would skip your annual doctor's appointment, right? In a small bowl, whisk together minced shallot, pomegranate juice, olive oil, spicy mustard, and peach dish salt to taste. In a large bowl, combine kale, bok choy, almonds and pepitas, dried dark berries, edamame, your sliced shallot, and your cooked wheat berries. Add the dressing to the large bowl and toss to combine. Lightly crush the kale in your hands so that you tenderize it a bit. It makes it a little bit more tasty and easier to chew and digest. Um, and then taste and adjust seasoning as desired. And finally, top your salad with your sliced apples. I love this salad because it contains not one, but two examples of nuts and seeds. I like nuts and seeds in my salad because in addition to being high in fiber and good fats, they also provide a nice crunch to the whole affair. They're also high in some vitamins like vitamin E and minerals like magnesium, calcium, and iron. This salad also has edamame, which are actually young little baby soybeans. And beans and legumes in general are great because they're a good source of protein and they're also high in things like iron. The salad gets a bit of sweetness from the dried dark berries. Now, dried fruits are a concentrated source of the same nutrients that your whole fruits have. It's just that since they've been dehydrated of their water content, they are much more concentrated in those nutrients and the natural sugars. And finally, the apple. I don't really need to go into why apples are so good for you. I'm sure we've all heard that over and over again. So instead, I will just tell some apple-themed jokes. What do you get when you cross a crustacean with an apple? A crab apple. What do you say to someone who's about to enjoy their lunch? Bone apple teat. What's, <laughs> what, what's an apple's... Favorite scenic mountain getaway? The Appalachians. <laughs> well, that's all I've got for superfoods right now. As always, you can visit peachdish.com to see our menu um, where we always have seasonal, delicious fruits and vegetables and recipes that go along with them that make them extra tasty. Until next time, peach out. Bye.